in time. They will talk about the courage of the first man who crossed this ocean and returned. And then you'll be able to say to them, I was on the Pinta. I was on the Nina and the Santa Maria. Yes, my friends, Christopher Columbus is Noah. And yes, the timeline is all jacked up. Our timeline is based off of the events of the Bible that are very much questionable. This was done to control the narrative of world history. It's not enough to regurgitate historical events. You have to understand them and realize, so dark the con of man. I know what I'm talking about, and I will explain. Welcome to Black History Decoded, where I give insight into Black or African history that has been misrepresented over the centuries. If God intended our proximity to Asia, do you believe that he would have waited for you to show it to the world? He chose a carpenter's son to reveal himself to the world. So you consider yourself the chosen one? Once I asked my father where he wanted to go. And he replied, I want to travel all over the seas. I want to get behind the weather. Columbus definitely sailed the ocean blue in 1492. In 1517, that's when the Protestant Reformation started a huge religious upheaval in Europe, a new world order for Europe and the world. Protest, reformation, renaissance, rebirth, new beginning. They said it in so many ways, it was a new world order. When that happens, things dramatically change. The Protestants literally said that they're going to take the information from the Catholics and translate it into their language. Well, when you do that, you could translate it properly, mistranslate it, or jumble stories up to suit whatever narrative you want, and that's exactly what the Protestants did. The King James Bible, 1611. So, 119 years after Noah, Christopher Columbus' famous voyage. Keep that in mind. The King James, or authorized version of the Bible, remains the most widely published text in the English language. It was the work of around 50 scholars who manipulated history, who were appointed in 1604 by King James and is dedicated to him. So King James claimed credit for other people's history. Think about it. 50 scholars translating information that has nothing to do with English or Protestant history. Then this King James takes credit and sends missionaries to spread this old new information around the entire world. Nobody sees a problem with this. Side note. October 21st, 1492. I think we have returned to Eden. Surely this is how the world once was in the beginning of time. If this quote about Eden is in his journals and he doesn't mention Adam and Eve, remember the King James Bible was created 119 years after Noah Christopher Columbus exploits. Those 50 scholars of King James used that information to come up with the Adam and Eve story, which actually comes from the famous ancient Egyptian story of Nut and Geb. Now, the Nut and Geb were actual people. They weren't god or goddesses, they're actual people. The reason why she's on top is because she's a prominent woman that went after somebody who she has no business going after, like someone who's beneath her, a little lowborn. And she really, really liked him. This was a huge scandal in ancient Egyptian history. So she went after him and they did the deed. Uh, they got caught and who mainly got in trouble? Nut mainly got in trouble. And the interesting thing is that they have this in the Sumerian history because the Sumerians are after the ancient Egyptians, not before, they're after the ancient Egyptians. And when they tell the story, yes, she went after somebody that she shouldn't have went after and she got in trouble for it. Okay? That is the story. These are actual people, not gods. Okay? What happened with Eve and Adam? Well, Eve seduced Adam, right? She gave him an apple. Hey, big boy, you know, take the apple, seduce them. They did the deed. Someone came in and found them. It wasn't God. Like, hey, where are you? Like, that's not God. That's an actual person that catches them in the act and they get in trouble. 
But who mainly gets in trouble? It's Eve that gets in trouble. She's the one that mainly gets in trouble, right? So they took that story and they thrust it to the beginning of time. So they used what Christopher Columbus said, like, oh, this must have been happened, like this, this, this paradise at the beginning of time, it must have happened. So they took the, the famous story of the ancient Egyptians, Nut and Geb, and they transported them to the beginning of time and said, like, God created them and that, that this is the situation. Like, you see the deception. So the whole story about Noah, Christopher Columbus, is about him wanting to travel across the sea. He was a very ambitious explorer. So the whole thing about God telling him to build a boat because there's going to be a flood, it's about his desire to cross the sea and the flood represents the waters he has to cross. Now, in the Bible, the Protestants talk about everything being dead because of the flood. It's poetic. You have to now look at it from their perspective. Most likely, none of them took a trip of this magnitude. You must be mad! Keep your voice down, Vincent. We are on the verge of a mutiny, Colon. You think I don't know that? We are lost! There's nothing but water surrounding them. They are the only people around for miles upon miles. Nothing but water, so they could stupidly assume that the world is flooded and they're the only people on the face of the earth. It's all from their perspective. In reality, of course, the whole world wasn't flooded. Noah, Christopher Columbus, getting a ship built and sailing to the New World was a huge event. Like we see here in the movie 1492 Conquest of Paradise, building or acquiring a ship took some financial backing. The Protestants make it seem that Noah and his family created the ship by themselves. The way they describe the ship, multiple people had to be working on it and they had to be paid. Make no mistake, Noah was definitely going to the New World and had to populate it, right? After Christopher Columbus's voyage, or Noah, to the New World and back, it started to become commonplace to go to the New World now. It's not that people weren't there already, but because of his efforts, the New World started to become much more populated. So you can see why Protestants said Noah and his family populated the world. The New World. Also, Ham, Shem, and Jepeth are most likely the owners or captains of the three ships. You are familiar with the work of Aristotle, Eratosthenes, Ptolemus? I am, your eminence. Then you cannot ignore that according to their calculations, the circumference of the earth is approximately 22,000 leagues or more, which makes the ocean uncrossable. But you may have found new evidence proving these great men of knowledge are totally mistaken. <laughs> so the information about the New World was not known by the majority of Europeans, which is very interesting. I'm sure they heard rumors of this, but they considered it lies or fake news. You need the blessing of this commission. If they say no, you would have to give up, my son. I will not give up. Is it ambition? We've been told lies for so long. They said that this was flat at this table, that monsters guard the edge of the world. I will not be told what to be afraid of or what not to be afraid of. I want to find out for myself. Noah, Christopher Columbus, wanted to prove them wrong, and he did, which is why he's so famous or infamous, depends on your perspective. I strongly suspect that the Jews and Muslims knew about this information and they kept it from the Christians, meaning Caucasians or white people. Out that Columbus himself was aware that African mariners had preceded him. In his diary of his second voyage, uh, Columbus tells of how the natives of Hispaniola actually had given him gold-tipped metal spearheads that they said were brought by black-skinned people who had come in large boats from the south and southeast. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. So yes, Africans knew how to build ships, and we know that modern humans come from Africa. What do you think those Africans did with all the vegetation and trees in what is now the Sahara? They did agriculture, and they were chopping down trees, building stuff with them, like boats or ships. All this before that area became a desert. 
So yes, the weather was responsible for creating the desert, but so were the Africans. Those blacks went into different parts of the world with that info, and some of them stayed in Europe. So obviously those people knew how to build ships as well. They shared that information with their light-skinned brethren, but because of certain events in the 1300s and onward, they decided to keep the information of the New World to themselves. Christians massacred a whole bunch of Jews all throughout Europe because they erroneously blamed them for the bubonic plague. Mass, mass slaughter all throughout Europe. The Jewish and Muslim religions are like sister religions. Also, the Jews and Muslims of old are not the same as the Jews and Muslims now. Now, I don't know for sure, but I suspect that Christopher Columbus followed some Jewish or Muslim ships that went to the New World. The expulsion was July 31st, 1492, if they didn't convert. Now, some of them could have left a little bit late, like August 3rd, 1492, and that's when Christopher Columbus left and probably found out which ships were going to the New World and he followed them. Now, I'm not sure, but it's a huge possibility. I find it fascinating that European society did not know about the New World when there's other people who did. It was a close guarded secret and for good reason because of European behavior in the 1300s and onward. What they did to the Jews, you would think that they would do the same thing to the people in the New World, and that's exactly what they did. That's why when these people talk about history, I'm skeptical about everything that they say, especially when they try to deny Black or African history. When I was growing up, I was taught in American history books that Africa had no history, and neither did I. That I was a savage about whom the less said the better, who had been saved by Europe and brought to America. And of course, I believed it. I didn't have much choice. Those were the only books there were. Everyone else seemed to agree. A white man that I've worked for, if he's alive today, he has, uh, he's a liberal with a capital L. His name was Gag Steiner. I asked him about some books on the African people in ancient history. And in the language of the South, he let me down slow. I mean, he spoke kindly. He said, you know, John, I'm, I'm sorry that you came from a race that's made no history. But if you persevere, if you obey laws and study hard, you make history someday. Here we see Christopher Columbus loves his wine just like Noah. So the story about Noah being naked and being made fun of, most likely, it was Christopher Columbus. Better luck with personnel. Who did we take on today? 30 blacksmiths, 28 halberdiers, 20 carpenters, 100 farmers, 20 miners. Oh, and Dr. Jenka, the royal surgeon. Then we can count on the royal help. <laughs> that is for his second voyage. If you watch the movie, they definitely brought along horses and probably some animals in order to have fresh food. So this whole Noah bringing animals on board, that's what Christopher Columbus did, but not, not on the scale that it says in the Bible. That's ridiculous. Now, I want you to think clearly. A worldwide flood did not happen, but if it did, you would think God or the 50 scholars would suggest to bring along various skilled individuals in order to create that new world. The Bible or the 50 scholars are trying to tell us that Noah and his family had the necessary skills and sexual stamina to bring about a new world. Even if you don't agree with me, do your own research and you will realize there's something wrong with the Noah narrative. There's a problem with the narratives of various events in the Bible. So how can our timeline be based off those events? Think about it. Like, share, subscribe, and make a comment. Thanks. What a waste of a life. A waste? Well, if your name of mine is ever remembered, it'll have. It will only be because of his.